They called him the untouchable, and for good reason. Nicolino Locha once sent a man flying into the ropes without ever having touched him. Like a human double end bag, Locha possessed next level timing and head movement that made him nearly impossible to hit. He won the junior welterweight title by frustrating his competitors so much he quit between rounds. Locha would end his career with a staggering record of 117 wins out of his 136 fights. It's actually a huge pet peeve of mine when fighters execute good head movement but don't use it to set up any counters. Sometimes they'll even let themselves get put into a bad position, wasting a number of opportunities to counter. However, Locha did do this, but he was so good that his head movement almost became a weapon all on its own, serving to frustrate and tire his opponents. His head movement was so advanced, so pristine, that he didn't even really need to combine it with footwork. He could just plant himself in front of his opponent and dare them to hit him. And in the end, Locha's head movement never left him in a bad position because like Floyd Mayweather, Locha was comfortable in all positions, even those that would normally be considered abysmal to most boxers. For example, both Mayweather and Locha were happy to willingly go back into a corner, even walking themselves there if the opponent insisted. And just like Mayweather, Locha could get away with this because of his deep understanding of head movement and the Philly shell defense. What this meant was that Locha was never at a huge disadvantage whether he was at long range, mid range, or close range. Any position, any stance, Locha had an answer to any punch. And despite having a ridiculously low KO to win ratio, Locha is still far more entertaining to watch than the vast majority of knockout artists and pretty much for the same reason as you watch a tightrope walker. So without further ado, let's break down Locha's defensive tactics to see exactly what made him so untouchable. Locha's defense began and ended with his ability to effortlessly manipulate distance in any direction. The way that he could move over, under, around, or even into his opponent's punches, it almost seemed like he knew what his competitors would throw before they did. One of the most powerful ways that Locha truly confounded his opponents was not to evade, but instead to close off lines of attack. And he did this by moving his head towards his opponent's punches, both stifling his opponent's assault and shutting down any follow-up blows. Moving into punches is incredibly counterintuitive, and many beginners struggle with it, as they naturally want their head to be as far from their opponent's punches as possible. But Locha is the perfect example of how this tactic can greatly reduce the risk for a boxer. By moving in and positioning his body in specific ways, Locha only left one or two openings that his opponents had as a reply. And this in turn made these punches easier to predict and avoid. Of course, Locha didn't simply walk into his opponent's punches. He moved inside of them to achieve specific positions. For instance, Locha's first tactic was to duck in and press his shoulder to his opponent's shoulder. This cut off space for their attack from that same side, drastically limiting their offense. Sometimes, he would even roll his shoulder directly into the opponent's rear hand attacks, almost like an advancing shoulder roll. In this instance, Locha's lead shoulder would be pressed against the opponent's rear shoulder. However, this did leave some room for looping rights, and Locha would sometimes have to spend his right arm controlling his opponent's left. So it figures that Locha's favorite position was to place his lead shoulder against his opponent's lead shoulder, left to left. From this position, Locha both blocked his opponent's view and momentarily smothered most of their weapons. Unfortunately, one of the few openings that was still available was Locha's left temple. But fortunately, he knew this and had the perfect response ready. Since I mentioned the Philly shell earlier, it should come as no surprise that Locha had an absolutely beautiful shoulder roll and counter. 
As the opponent's punch came in, Locho would shrug his shoulder up and turn his body to deflect the punch away, and then return a hard counter. Like James Tony, Locho was an expert at tailoring his shoulder roll to deal with any kind of punch. If you've ever seen the boxer attempt a shoulder roll but get caught by an overhand, it's likely because they only know how to shoulder roll crosses and don't really understand the nuances of rolling different kinds of punches. By leaning back at the correct angle, Locha created the perfect slope with his body to let opponent's punches just slide off. This nuance is one of the reasons the Philly Shell is such a hard system to learn, but Locha was all about nuance. So after rolling his opponent's right, he of course chose a well-tailored punch to follow up with, be it a rear hook, cross, or uppercut. Locha also employed this same smothering tactic with low-line head movement. As the opponent came in, he would drop low and run his shoulder into his opponent's hip. Once again, this completely cut off several avenues of attack. And once again, Locha preferred to cross over his left shoulder, placing it against his opponent's left hip. From this position, his competitors had barely any room to operate. Realistically, all they could do was try to readjust through footwork, or attempt a lead hook or uppercut. But with barely any distance to build up momentum, these attacks often lacked power. But Locha's counter from this position didn't. He liked to take opponents unaware, popping up to deliver a powerful left hook. Although he usually used the hip position to transfer to even better positions. Locha would build on this position by sliding his head from his opponent's hip up to the outside of their rear shoulder. And this was a very advantageous angle. Like a duck under in wrestling, Locha could come up from behind his opponent, both smothering their work and forcing them out of alignment. Muay Thai's most untouchable fighter, Lerdzile, uses the same tactic to escape corners today. And like Lerdzile, Loche would shuffle away to either side. Whether escaping to the inside or the outside, the opponent was forced to readjust their stance, giving Loche all the time he needed to exit to mid-ring or counter-attack. During any given exchange, Locha could employ one or all of these tactics. So we've covered what Locha did, but now it's time to cover how he was able to do it. Most fighters would find themselves running their heads into punches, even attempting to emulate Locha. So how the hell did the man get away with embarrassing high-level fighters? It all has to do with what, in my opinion, is the single most important element of fighting. Timing. And when it comes to Locha, his timing wasn't all about natural reflexes. Locha was arguably just as good as Joe Frazier at completely getting inside of an opponent's rhythm. Like the perfect dance partner, Locha could move with his opponent with little to no delay, as if he knew what his opponent was going to do even before he did it. Matching his speed and position perfectly, Locha would transform into the mirror image of his competitors, staying in sync as if he was their shadow. But this shadow boxer could hit back. The fact is, many times Locha did know exactly where and when his opponent would strike, because he had already baited them into moving precisely how he wanted them to. All he had to do was wait to spring the trap. And the key to any good trap is bait. In between evasions, Locha would move into a position where he had a clear line of sight on his opponent. And from there, he would pause. This slight pause both gave the opponent a tempting target and allowed Locha to look for the subtle movements of his opponent's body that would signal what punch was coming next. Most boxers develop the ability over time to notice these telegraphic signals, but by resetting positions to give himself a clear line of sight to his opponent's body after every evasion, 
Lochim maximized his ability to pick up on these tells, and incentivized his competitors to strike at that exact moment. If you're having trouble noticing these mid evasion pauses, try noticing when Locha makes a small movement before an even bigger evasion. It's a lot like a swimmer coming up to breathe before diving back under. Smothering an opponent's attacks to limit their offensive options to a handful of predictable punches. Keeping his opponent in a clear line of sight in between evasions. Pausing to bait his competitors into punching when and how he wanted them to, so he could better predict those punches. These were the tools in Loach's bag of tricks, and by combining them, he was able to pull off some truly insane, incredible stunts. He could evade punches by turning his head, letting them skim past his cheek. Or he could tilt his head, letting the punch just graze his temple. Or he can move with his opponent's punches, staying just ahead of them. This is a level of precision very few fighters have ever achieved. Muhammad Ali and Canelo Alvarez being a few. While his lack of power and limited offense stopped him from becoming as great as he could have been, he may well hold the title of having the greatest head movement of all time. But I'm curious what you think. So let us know in the comments who you think had better or just crazier head movement. To learn the tactics of Locha and other great fighters, you can check out my books on defense, footwork, and power linked below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian wishing you happy training.